All right, this is the test review for exam one. So let's take a look. The first problem here, it is an order of operations problem. So what we need to do is we need to simplify the numerator and denominator um, by doing order of operations. So I have here 17 plus, I'm going to do this exponent first. So three to the second power is nine minus two. In the denominator, I'm going to multiply that five times the negative two, which is negative ten. All right, now I need to go four times nine. That's thirty-six. And then negative ten minus ten is negative ten. Okay. So seventeen plus thirty-six minus two is fifty-one over negative 20. So 51 and 20, the factors of 51 are 3 and 17. Those are both prime. The factors of 20 do not have a 3 or a 17 as a factor, so that means that my final answer is negative 51 over 20. I wrote the negative in the numerator just because it's a cleaner way to write the answer. So, negative 51 over 20 is the final answer for 1a. Okay, 1b is a very similar type of problem, just following the order of operations. Negative 3 squared is 9 plus 7. And then negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 divided by 2. Okay, I had to do this multiplication before I did the division. So now I'm going to do any multiplication that is in the problem. Negative 6 times 9 is negative 54. Let's see, plus 7. And then negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Then we will just add that across. Okay, so when you add that all out, you get negative 35. Okay, there's no other reducing that we can do that, so negative 35 would be our final answer. Okay, question two is going to be solving equations. For so this first equation has fractions, so we need to get rid of the fractions first by finding the LCD. Okay, so finding the LCD between 2, 4, and 2, the 4, 2, and 4 is 4. So instead of like a fraction adding where we have to keep the denominators the same, when we have an equation, we just want to multiply every group or term of the equation by that LCD. Okay, so if we do that, and we have that 4 times 2x minus 3, over 4, that 4 and the 4 cancel. Okay. Then if I have this 4 times 4 minus or x minus 4 all over 2, the 2 and the 4 cancel. And then I have minus x plus 1 times 4 over 4. Those fours cancel. Alright, so then I'm going to write out what we have. We end up with 2x minus 3 equals x minus 4 minus x plus 1. Now, I put parentheses around these for a very important reason. It's because if I go on the left side, I don't really need them. On this right side, I must distribute this minus sign right here through. Okay, so it's going to be a negative times an x is a negative x, and a negative times positive 1 is a minus 1. All right, so then after you get the distributing through, then we're just going to solve. So we have 2x minus 3. To solve, we need to combine like terms. 
x minus x and then negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Add that 3 over, we get 2x equals negative 2. And divide both sides by 2, we get x equals negative 1. And if you aren't sure if you got it right or not, you can go back and plug in the negative 1 into the original equation to see if you got it right. All right, B, very similar. We have 4, 5, and 10. We need to find the LCD of. So the LCD D between 4 and 5 is 20. 10 is a multiple of 20, so that means our LCD is, in fact, 20. So I'm just going to go through and multiply each term by 20. So I have 1 fourth X times 20 plus... 2 fifths times 20 equals 9 tenths times 20. And we'll go and we'll reduce each one of those. So 4 divides into 20 five times. So I have 5x. 5 goes into 20 four times. So 4 times 2 is 8. And 10 goes into 22 times, so that equals 18. All right, subtract the 8 over. We get 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5. And we get x equals 2. Okay, let's look at C. So we have here 3x plus 5 equals. We must distribute that 5x through, so that's 5x minus 15 minus 2x. So 3x plus 5 equals 3x minus 15. Subtract the 3x over, and our variables disappear, and we're left with this equation, 5 equals negative 15, which is not a true equation. So because it's not a true equation, that means that we have no solution. So there we go. Now if we look at... D, I think D is going to be fairly similar. We have here 3x. We must distribute not just the 3, but the negative sign through. So it's negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And negative 3 times negative x is plus 3x. Let's distribute the 6 through. So that's 6x minus 6. So 6x minus 6 equals 6x minus 6. So that means that negative 6 equals negative 6. Okay. With that, then, we have a true solution. So that means that our solution is all real numbers. So there we go. That, I believe, is the first page of our test review. Let's go on to the next page. All right, this next question tells us we have two plans and we want to find after how many months are the two plans the same cost. We have plan A, which gives us an initial cost of $75 plus $15 per month, and plan B, which is $20 plus $26 per month. Each one of these represent the total cost for each plan. If we set those equal to each other and we solve, we get 55 equals 11x, and divide both sides by 11, we get x equals 5. So the last thing on these types of problems is just make sure you go and you answer the question. The question says how many months are the two clubs the same cost? Same price, so 5 represents the number of months, so that is 5 months. 
And there we go. All right, the next functions, and these aren't chapter two. They used to be chapter two before our old book. But our next sex problems here, it says find the domain and range of each relationship. Okay, and then state whether or not the relationship is a function. So here we have the domain, or the x values. We have 1, 3, 5, and 6. Our range would be 2, 4, 6, and 6. Now this is a function because every x has one y. Now even though y is repeating, that's okay. In order for it to be a function, every x has to have only one y. All right. Um, for the next one here, we have the domain as we have 2, 4, and 6. And the range is 1, 3, 5, and 6. Okay, there's a problem here. 6 has two different y values. 6 goes to 5 and 6 goes to 6. Because of that, this is not a function. Okay. Um, next question. Find the slope of a line passing through the two points. Describe the line passing through the points. Is it increasing, decreasing, horizontal, or vertical? So, pretty simple. We just need our slope formula. So we have here 4 minus 2 over 1 minus 5. So that means our slope is, neg let's see, 2 over negative 4. 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. And because our slope is negative, it means it is decreasing or going down. Okay, okay, so for the next problem here, we want to find the equation. So we have the equation, we want to find the slope and the y-intercept and then graph. So the best way to do this is to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract the 12 to the left side and add the 3y over. Then I just will go and divide everything in my equation by 3. So I end up with 4 thirds x minus 4. That is what my y is equal to. So that means that my slope is 4 thirds and my y-intercept is at negative 4. Then if I want to graph that, I just start at the negative 4 and I rise 4, run 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, run 1, 2, 3. If I want to do that twice, I can. You don't have to. Then you just get to draw a line. All right, so let's put our ruler up here. And we just draw that line. Maybe, there we go. So then we have our line and then I think that is all they're asking in the problem. Yep, that's it. So we have our line. I'm just going to put arrows on the end because it is going both directions. All right, that is it for this page. Let's go on. All right, so the first problems on this page are to write the equation for the line in slope-intercept form and then graph. So first thing when we're trying to write an equation of the line is that we need to find the slope. Okay, and in order to find the slope, if we have two points, we're just going to go y2 minus y1 over x2, which is 4, minus negative 1, so plus 1. So that's 5 over 5, so that means our slope is 1. Then the second thing we are going to do 
is we're going to use this y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm supposed to say x1 there. Okay, and then we're going to plug the points in. So y minus negative 3 is plus 3 is equal to your slope, which is 1 times x minus x1, which is negative 1, so that's plus 1. Then we just solve. For y. So we have y plus 3 equals 1x plus 1. Subtract the 3 over, you get y minus y equals x minus 2. Alright, the last thing that they want you to do is just graph that. I will do kind of a rough graph here. Alright, so the equation of our line is y equals mx plus b, or 1x minus 2. So my y-intercept is negative 2, and my slope is rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. And then we have our line. Okay, for the second problem, the points are a little bit bigger, so let's find the slope. Okay, so our slope is 16 minus 15 over negative 5 minus negative 10, so plus 10. So that's 1 over 5. All right, then we're going to put into our equation of the line. So we have y minus our y point is equal to our slope, which is 1 fifth times x minus our x point, so plus 10. And then we will solve for y. Um, y minus 15 equals 1 fifth x. 1 fifth times 10 is 2. Add that 15 over, we get 1 fifth x plus 17. Okay, since they do ask us to graph these, we will attempt to graph. My y-intercept is pretty high up there. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17.